Hi everybody and welcome to Fab Tax. I'm Rosemary and in today's video I have something a little bit different. In part, this is a compilation video of the multiple outdoor decor videos I've published over the last several weeks. And what I've done is splice together the DIY videos with the makeover videos so that the DIYs and how I use them on my porch, patio, and deck are now grouped together by area and on one video. But then, as an added bonus, I also went shopping and found hundreds of great buys because the only thing I like better than making things is buying things cheap on a great sale or for a great value. So what I've done is re-edit the videos around 30 decorating ideas. Then, in addition to providing the DIY how-tos and the before and afters, I also provided these buy options with great budget-friendly suggestions from places like Amazon, Walmart, Target, and Home Depot. And oh my goodness, did I find some great stuff at some great prices. And then provided the links so that you can check it out for yourself if you like. So if you're all about the DIY, you can just fast forward through those buying sections. On the other hand, if you're all about the BUI, then you can do just the opposite and fast forward through the DIY stuff and focus on all the great buys that I found. But if you're like me and you enjoy all of it from the DIYing to the finding good buys to the decorating, then sit back, relax, maybe grab a snack or a beverage and enjoy the video. The first outdoor area that I'm going to tackle is the porch, but my first decorating idea actually goes to all three sections, and that is to clean and refresh what you already have. So I have a small front porch area, and what I have to work with is my front door, and then I also have one of these great little hanging planters, and then also a great little wrought iron bench, and then some space above that bench that I wanna do something with. Now, as you can see, this bench is a little worse for wear and does need a little cleanup as well as a fresh coat of some black spray paint. In addition, my little hanging planner can also use a little cleanup and spray paint as well. And then as you can see, the porch itself does need a little cleanup. And so I would have done this with my power washer. Unfortunately, it went kaput when we were doing the back of the house. But I did find another option. So along with picking up some black spray paint, I also picked up this 30 second outdoor cleaner, which did a great job not only on the furniture, but on the porch itself. I just hooked it up to the end of the hose and it just created a really great stream. Of course, it wasn't as powerful as my power washer, but it pumped out the, and I'm not sure how that uh, nozzle works, but it did pump out the water in a pretty um, intense fashion. Again, not as strong as a power washer, but it did do a great job, especially then combining it with the soap, with the detergent in the uh, bottle. It just, I don't know how it pulls it in or how it works, but it's, you can see it does a really nice job, really creates a nice strong stream and um, really cleaned up the whole area really well, just as well as it would have had I had my power washer. It costs about $13 for that 64 ounce bottle. And again, I will link that in the description box below. Then after washing both the bench and the plant holder with the 30 second cleaner, I let it dry and then gave it a fresh coat of some black spray paint. Now I originally purchased this bench at Big Lots for about $100 12 years ago. And I am happy to report they still have a bench at about $100 price point. Unfortunately though, it's like in a gold tone. So I did want to include some other black finish options uh, also below $100 from these other retailers. And then again, there's that 30 second cleaner. The next decorating idea is to add some color texture and soften the space with some decorative pillows. And then here you can see how this great $12 pillow from Walmart does just that on the newly freshened bench. Now this particular pillow is an in-store only purchase. However, here are some other options from other retailers like Kirkland's, World Market, and Kohl's, which you can get online. And that bottom set, the two for 18 from the Walmart section, that is also available online. Most of these pillows are marked down as they are on their way to after season clearance. But as you can see, you can get some great selection still. And once you get to that July 4th holiday, things will start to really, prices will really start to plummet, but unfortunately so will the selection. So you're gonna wanna check these out as soon as you can. For the next decorating idea, I have found a great decorating friend in super strong mounting tape. Now, as you can see, this area above the bench has a stone covering. Now, this isn't a real stone, it's kind of like a fabricated stone, which is easier to drill into than real stone or brick, but I still don't want to drill into it. But now I found this great Gorilla mounting tape. This stuff is amazing. 
it holds to brick and stone like you cannot believe. And um, it costs about $5. You can get it on Amazon. I'll link it again below. And what I did was I took some of these little dessert cups from the Dollar Tree. They come six to a pack for a dollar. And then I just spray painted them with that metal type black spray paint. Then I took strips of this Gorilla Glue, put it on the back of the cups, added some of those greens that I purchased from Walmart for 88 cents a bunch, and then just stuck those in the cups and attached the cups to the wall. And it created some great wall decor for my little bench and pillow nook. Now, if you're not feeling my design or up for any spray painting, here are some other great outdoor wall decor ideas that will work great with that Gorilla mounting tape. But note that the Amazon items seem to be year-round items that are always available, while those from Kirkland's and Kohl's definitely seem to be seasonal on their way again to after-season clearance. Next, I wanted to refresh my welcome mat and decided to go for a refinish option on one I already had. And I did that by just taking some regular craft paint and mixing a brown shade and a yellow shade together because I wanted to get the, a color close to what was on the original mat. You can see there where it's kind of really been faded out from the sun. And so I basically am using the craft paint with the addition of some water to create a stain. And I just um, made the paint, as you can see, nice and thin with that water after I got it to the color that I wanted it to be. And then I'm just using one of these little uh, foam brushes with a flat head to go in. First, I'm going on along the sides of the edges where it had been really worn just from wear. And, um, and then I was switched over to this great big one from the Dollar Tree. Actually, the Dollar Tree ones come in all different sizes. That one with the black head uh, actually came from Michael's, but um, Dollar Tree's pack has, it comes three to a pack and they have um, that size as well. So uh, in any event, I just went back with this stain that I created with that craft paint and just went over the entire surface of the mat. And then I went back with a black paint marker and just finished over all of the lettering as well as the black frame around the mat. And then I just sprayed the mat with a protective finish of polyurethane spray paint. And now here you can see the finished mat on the doorstep. And then by comparison, here is the refinished one and here's the original. So you can see where it really made a big difference. But if you don't have all those items on hand like I do and you're like, why would I do all that? Here are some other great options to purchase. And although I've not used myself the two from Amazon for $5.82, they do seem to have really good reviews. But I can tell you that the items from Big Lots and Walmart are gorgeous in person because I've seen them in person, both of them. Really nice material. And um, I've also used mats from both of these retailers. Uh, it's very similar to these in the past and they have worn quite well and held up quite well. A beautiful wreath or other door decor is one of the best ways to freshen your entry and welcome friends to your home. Personally, I've been eyeing those bucket wreaths that I have seen around and knew I wanted to make one of those for my spring and summer door. At first I thought I'd use this Cascade Pods container for the bucket. I was just going to refinish it with a galvanized finish. But then I remembered I had purchased this little item back a few years at Hobby Lobby during their clearance sale. And I was like, this is the perfect option for what I want. So what I did was just go out to Dollar Tree and purchase a bunch of white stems. I bought both the spike as well as the lilac in white. And I think I have about maybe 20 stems there. It looks like it. And then in addition to that, I purchased this black and white ribbon from uh, Michaels. And um, this ribbon is probably about $5 a roll normally, but as always, I purchased it on sale. And um, you probably wanna get that on sale only because they're no longer taking that 40% off coupon. Um, that's just, they just do like a 20% thing now. But in any event, um, I just put in, I just uh, tied the ribbon around the two handles on the bucket. And then I started putting the spike towards the back of the, Arrange of the bucket and then uh, the lilac in the front and I'm using some floral foam at the bottom but really you can just stick it in the bucket and I think it would look just as nice and there you go it's as easy as that tie a ribbon at the top and you have a great bucket wreath door decor.
So if you wanted to make a similar bucket, the best prices that I found for the little bucket was at Michael's for $3.99 and then of course that's also where I got the ribbon. But what I also discovered is that Michael's has this amazing selection of pre-made wreaths available um, again on that clearance so they're going you know down in price as well as down in selection and these were all online i'm not sure what they have in the store but i have provided links to these and you can also see uh, the other ones that they do have available and um, yeah you can't make this for 23.99 so this is definitely a great value so the next thing I did for my little porch refresh was to add in some plants in some easy DIY planters. So the one planter I'm making here, I'm making from a Tidy Cats cat litter box, and then also some of these Dollar Tree yo-yo favor surprises, and then some black paint, which I will spray them all with. Now, first I did want to just remove that uh, handle from the cat litter box, and I just used a utility knife to cut it off there at the edge and then it creates kind of like a little decoration so I just left that in place and then I just took the yo-yos and removed the string and then used some E6000 glue to attach the two yo-yos together to create little legs for my planter and then I made four of those and then proceeded to paint them all with the black spray paint as well as the little container itself so that once everything was painted, I just took again some more E6000 glue and put it in the four corners of my container and added the little feet to the bottom. And then I just took my drill and I drilled some holes in the bottom of the container. Not actually drilling them there, I just wanted to note that that's eventually what I did. And um, here you can see the planter right side up with a beautiful hydrangea in it. And I felt like it was maybe a little bit plain. And so what I did was decide to add some of these poster letters that I had um, from previous projects and just added the word hi to the front. But then I decided maybe I did want one in the blue. That is the beauty of DIY. You can change the colors as you choose. I did want to keep the black one though, maybe for the back. So I did opt to go ahead and just do a second one with that beautiful blue shade from Kills Chalk Paint. And then I decided to do a second DIY planter by using this old toy bin, which I painted. It's a red toy bin, but I painted the front of it black. And then also this bin from the Dollar Tree, as well as four wiffle ball bats from the Dollar Tree, which I all painted all of those with white spray paint. Now, since this is sprayed on black uh, on the front, it probably wasn't the best option to do the sticker method on because uh, of course it did pull off some of that paint and I had to go back and fix it, but it worked good enough. And so all I did was apply the stickers to the front of the uh, bin and I just did it on my ruler so that it's kind of lined up and ready to go. And then I just placed the stickers right on top of that front section where I had painted the black paint and then paint it over top of the whole thing with some white spray paint. And then the stickers stayed in place over the black section so that when I pulled the stickers up, the black would still be underneath, or at least some of the black would still be underneath whatever got didn't get pulled up from the sticker. That I eventually did just have to fix. Then I just took some white craft paint on a dry brush and just gently went over the lettering just to give it a little bit of distressing. Next, I took some black craft paint on a makeup sponge and just created some chipping along the edges and bottom of the bin. To assemble the table, I took my painted white bin from the Dollar Tree and uh, the four wiffle ball bats. Now, if I was just going to go in on that side, the skinny side, I could have used the regular zip ties, but I did decide to go on the fatter end. And so I had to use those great big zip ties. They do sell them at the Dollar Tree. And all I'm doing is putting the bat in the corner of the bin and then threading the zip tie through the slots in the bin and then just securing it in place. I'm doing one to the top and one to the bottom. And then I'm going to repeat that for all four corners. And then I just flip it over and just in itself it makes a cute little table. But I'm going to go ahead and add my little flower bin to the top of this table, I'm going to add some E6000 glue first and then just place the flower bin right on top. 
I then just added some flowers and placed it back on the porch. Now you notice I did pull those uh, back legs out a little bit. That's just because this porch is on a slant and so uh, I had to do that in order for it to kind of sit straight. Now I do have several DIY planter videos, which I will link in the description box as well. But if you are not up for DIYing, here are some great options from multiple retailers, which again will be linked in the description box as well. And then here is a finished look at the porch. Here we have the little black planter, nicely painted with a new plant in it, as well as the two planters, the DIY planters that were made. Here is a look at the kitty litter planter in blue, as well as the wiffle ball bat planter there in the corner. And then here we have the bucket wreath hanging nicely on the door, as well as the Dollar Tree wall sconces attached with that gorilla mounting glue. And then finally, the little refreshed bench with a cozy little pillow. And now on to the backyard and the patio. And if you have been following this series, the original series, you know that this patio has a story to it. And if you're interested in hearing about that, I will link that video in the description box as well. But suffice to say that this is the video I was actually in the process of doing this portion of the patio about two years ago before a little storm called Harvey came to visit our house. And so I actually took this footage on my phone as inventory for insurance should we be affected by the storm. And let's just say that we were. So here is some still shots after the storm of that same space. And things got a little tore up. And so this makeover actually has its roots in that time. Actually a little bit before that time. So here is what the patio looked like when we first moved in. A small cement covered space. But we made plans to extend it to the left with some decking, add a little pergola, and maybe even a little koi pond. In addition, we would wrap the patio section in decking to tie the two together, and then maybe add some cabinets to the back to close off that little nook and create maybe a little mini kitchenette. My husband had previous experience building decks and had built us a beautiful deck in our home in Pennsylvania, and that's him there on site at that location. But back to post-storm Texas, and first on the list to do this patio makeover was to paint the concrete floor after all this mess was cleaned up. And I did this myself just using this Benjamin Moore saddle brown paint. You just roll it on like you're painting a wall. It took me only about an hour to do and it came out great. Next was to tackle those cabinets and I found some great prefabricated options from a company called New Age that are available at both Lowe's and Home Depot. And miracle of miracles, the combination I wanted was 92 inches wide, which is the exact size of the nook that I wanted to put them in. And better yet, they were 25% off. Now this was a big ticket renovation and each of these cabinets does run about $600 each. And then you add in any of the custom pieces like this cabinet that was built as well as the countertops and the tile. So it is a large expense, but I just wanted to point these out because if you are looking at doing something like this, this prefabricated option can save you a lot of money. And then here it is today, a few years later, you can see how everything's holding up really well. And then I also wanted to especially show you how nicely the floor is looking. Now this, I wasn't sure how this would wear over a couple of years, but it has worn extremely well. This is two years ago that I painted this and it shows no signs of wear whatsoever. That hazing that you see in the corner, that's actually dust. That is not anything wrong with it. Taking a look at the buying options, you can see how those cabinets are available in different configurations and different finishes. But I also wanted to show you some non-major renovation options that are available to create work, serve, and storage space in your outdoor area, including this great little cabinet on wheels from Home Depot, as well as these modular units from Ikea that can be mixed and matched into different combinations. So now I'm going to get into the decorating of this area. And so as you can see, I've added some items to the countertops and walls. And the first decorating idea I'd like to mention is the addition of sconces, vases, and other wall decor, which can hold fresh garden clipping. For example, here I created this wall hanging, which has a built-in vase that I can put fresh clippings from the garden. To make, I used this piece of a wall hanging that I got on clearance because the middle panel had been busted out. And then this small chalkboard from Walmart. Dollar Tree also has small chalkboards like this. I happen to have this one from Walmart, so I'm using that. And then I went ahead and used this rain gauge that I got from the Dollar Tree that's going to form 
the vase portion of my wall. For the chalkboard, I wanted to copy this plaque that I have in my house. That's one of my favorite quotes. It's life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. So what I did was that I printed that quote out on my computer to about the size that would fit on my chalkboard. And I wanted to use chalk to transfer the print, just scribble the chalk on the back and then just trace that onto the surface of the chalkboard. But unfortunately, uh, the chalk wasn't working and I had to try to use this pencil. And believe it or not, even though the pencil is dark, it did show up and uh, leave a print on the chalkboard. To prevent my template from slipping, I did go ahead and just tape it down to hold it in place. And then just went and traced all of the letters with my pencil on the front side. And then once the entire quote was complete, I just removed the template from the chalkboard. And there you can see, it almost looks like an engraving. And I just went back then with a white chalk marker and filled in all of the, the letters on the quote. Next, I took my rain gauge and I just wanted to cover this little plastic stake that goes into the ground. Didn't want that showing. So what I did was took some twine and added some hot glue to the back of the rain gauge, then just wrap the bottom portion of the rain gauge in the twine. Every once in a while, I would add a little multi-surface glue just to keep the uh, twine in place as I wrapped it around that plastic piece at the bottom. And then once that piece was completely covered, I just took some hot glue and secured the bottom in place. Then I glued the rain gauge as well as the little chalkboard in place using some E6000 glue. To add some accents, I just took some of these Dollar Tree stickers and painted them with white chalk paint. And then they just added the perfect touch to finish off my water vein wall hanging. Now, if you're not up for making one of these of your own, here are some other great options. It's kind of funny, but Target actually has one very similar to the one that I made. Uh, it is $49, of course, and it doesn't have the little saying at the bottom, but it is very similar to that one if that is something that you are very interested in, as well as all of these other options from these other retailers, again, that again will be linked in the description box below if you would like to check them out. For my next decorating idea, I wanted to add an herb garden, which is a great addition to any outdoor space, especially for summertime cooking. And here you can see I put together several DIY planters for my herb garden. Uh, just the one in the middle I'll be showing in this video, but I will link the other two in the description box below. So for this DIY, I wanted to make use of this two-tier basket I've had for some time that is in this kind of rectangular shape and it really kind of doesn't have a lot of really good applications actually. Um, I did have it outside, that's why it's kind of worn down there for a while holding a couple of different things, but I decided that would be a good candidate to repurpose into my herb garden along with these recycled cans of tomatoes. First, I drilled some holes in the bottoms of my cans and then I'm going to go ahead and paint the cans with some white chalk paint. Once that paint is dry, I'm going to just take some black craft paint on a makeup sponge and just create some chip marks there along the edges and some scuff marks along the sides of the can to create an aged weathered look. Next, I'm going to take some painter's tape and apply it there at the top of the can, leaving a little space between the bottom of the tape and that first ridge on the can. Now, this is just going to create a nice little spot to, for me to gauge the height of my letters so that I can just freehand the word sage, in this case, uh, here on this can. And so I'm just making the letters tall and skinny and just using that bottom of the tape and top of the ridge as my guide. And then I'm going to fill the bottom of my can with some Dollar Tree stones just to create a little drainage, extra drainage there for my herbs. And then here you see the finished project, a nice two tier culinary herb garden. But if you're not up for all that, there are some great store-bought options. My favorite is this one here in the middle from Home Depot for $23. It's a multi-tiered planter with a small footprint and eight sections, and it also rotates. So it's great if you don't have much space on a countertop or by a window, and then you can just rotate it around um, either to get your herbs or to get the plants more sun or to water. 
And then there are some other cute little three section options that are also available from these other retailers. I just love the use of string lights or candlelight in an outdoor space. It's not only functional for evenings outside, but it also creates a warm and inviting ambiance. A great way to add that effect would be to use wall decor that lights up. In the next DIY, I will show you how I made that branch light up decor, but I also have some great buy options right after. To make the wall hanging I used, I took two of these canvases. These were from a previous art DIY project that I had and I just flipped it over and then began taping off the interior wood of the frame. I'm going to be painting the inside of the canvas and I want that wood to remain unpainted. After the canvas was painted with black spray paint, I went back and removed the tape. Then I flipped the canvas back over and began stapling the front of the canvas. So I'm going to just staple all the way around just the way it was stapled on the back and then use a utility knife to cut to the right side of the staples so that I can now easily remove that canvas that is on the wood on the back side. Once all the canvas was removed, I took some wood stain and just proceeded to stain the wood frame by just taking a rag and then dipping it into the stain and rubbing it into the wood, making sure to get all the parts of the exposed wood. Next, I took some branches from the yard and just gave them a whitewash by dry brushing on some white chalk paint and then set them aside to make sure that they had dried completely. Then I went back to my canvas to attach my battery operated fairy lights. And I just did that by attaching them with my stapler. I then took my branches and glued them into the frame. I glued them with some hot glue on the tops and bottoms and in the middle where needed. And then here is the finished project. Now this is one side of it. And I just attached the two with some brackets that I purchased from Lowe's. And then here are the store bought options, which were actually surprisingly hard to find. The only non-candle option I could find that was reasonably priced were the mason jar plaques from Amazon there at the right. I actually love these though. They are well sized and charming and come complete with the flowers and everything. The other options are actually candle sconces, but you can use them with battery operated tea lights that can be used with a timer or controlled simultaneously with a remote control. You can get those on Amazon and they come in a pack of 12 for $15. And I just wanted to mention that all of these items should be used in areas that are completely covered, like a covered porch, patio, or sunroom. When you have a lot of different elements going on, a great way to pull all the colors together and warm up the space is by adding an area rug. For my patio, I purchased this gray and tan checked rug at Big Lots about two years ago now, and it's holding up very well. Now this is a wool type rug, you know, the typical kind of area rug that you get for the outdoors. And you can see how it does pull in those gray cabinets and the brick on the wall to pull all the colors in. And then here are some great well-priced outdoor area rugs that I found. Now these are all in about the five by seven to six by nine foot range. And you can see how these prices are fantastic for that size of a rug. The rugs from Kohl's and Walmart were on sale as we are now starting to get into that after season clearance time frame. It'll really kick up after July 4th, but they've already started to mark these items down. Now, Big Lots on the other hand is still at full price, but I can guarantee you because there's no way I paid that much for that rug, uh, that they will be, I believe it was half price that I paid for that rug when I purchased it two years ago. Another great thing to buy at the end of the season is outdoor furniture. And many of the retailers have already started marking those down. If you're in the market, I did want to point out a few things about size, shape, and whether or not you should buy a set. Since my patio space is so narrow, I needed to get a table that was not too wide. This expandable Apolaro table from Ikea fit the bill perfectly. However, the chairs that go with this IKEA table are kind of big and bulky. So to better fit my space, I opted for these black metal chairs from World Market. I purchased both the chairs and the cushions two years ago at the end of season, and I got the chairs for 50% off and the cushions for 75% off. And as you can see that this combination fits this space perfectly. Now the set would have been way too bulky for this small area that I have. So this combination was the right fit. Now in your area, maybe round or square, 
or a wider table would work better. So get what fits your space. And I have found some great options. So up in the left hand corner is the Ikea table that I have. You can see where it does come up on two sides. It is a great table. Uh, the chairs from World Market, however, are almost sold out. You can't get them online anymore. And it does appear that if you go in store, they might have them. They are reduced, but I think I paid even less than that. Uh, but Ikea does have another option that is similar for a really good price as well. But I was really excited to see what both Home Depot and Lowe's have available. Uh, Home Depot has both a rectangular and a round table, while Lowe's has a square one, and they are all for under $100. And then they both have a selection of mix and match chairs in various colors that you can just mix and match with these table options. And so you can see a whole set coming in at around $134 or $160, whereas if you purchase a set like this, it typically runs upwards of four or five hundred dollars and then once you have your set you can finish it off beautifully with some table settings and a centerpiece which brings me to decorating idea number 14 add style and color to your patio table with a centerpiece to make the centerpiece shown i used two packs of the large paint sticks that i purchased from lowe's some dollar tree beads and some dollar tree skewers and craft sticks and then also some recycled bottles from various salad dressings, hot sauces, and beverages. I also needed some white and cashew colored chalk paint. To construct, I took my paint sticks and added some glue to the inside edge. I'm using here this tight bond glue. Um, it's kind of a multi-purpose glue, but it also works with wood. And then um, once the three paint sticks were attached, I then went with cross sticks of the popsicle sticks and then repeated the process with the other three paint sticks on the other side. And then once I had all of my cross sticks applied, I took two of the, uh, sorry, three of the larger craft sticks and laid them out horizontally and glued them in place to hold the two sides together. Then I took these wood craft cubes from the Dollar Tree and added those to the bottom, just again with the wood glue uh, to create little feet for the tray. To paint the beads, I added them to these skewers. I wanted to snip that bottom off just because it is very pointy and uh, just it makes it a little duller so that you know you don't stab yourself with it. And then I just went ahead and loaded all the beads onto the skewer. And then what I'm going to do is just, once all the uh, beads, the skewer is filled with the beads, and it doesn't matter what colors you're putting on because all of them I'm going to just put into this little form and then spray paint them all white. And then I'm going to go back to my tray and you can see here it has this actually quite a beautiful color of natural wood and it's very similar to that cashew color which is why I want to use it because I'm going to dry brush the natural color with some of the white paint and then I'm going to do the opposite on the white beads I'm going to dry brush those with the cashew paint so it'll create the same effect just in reverse so uh, to dry brush, all I'm doing is getting some of that chalk paint and uh, dabbing it off of my brush. And it's kind of less is more because what I'm trying to do is create that beached out weathered look. And um, I'm just kind of applying a little at a time so that I don't overdo it. And then I can just kind of gauge it as I'm going versus putting on too much and then I can't get it off. And then once it's uh, achieved that effect that I want, I'm going to switch over to the beads. And again, I'm going to just dry brush the beads now with the cashew colored chalk paint. And then you'll see how the two actually meet up. So uh, they match each other, but now they were kind of done in reverse, but they do have the same color effect. And then I'm going to just go ahead and attach the bead skewers to the sides of the tray. Uh, with my both actually the wood glue and then because I don't want it to slide around or have any issues as I'm working with it I did go back and also add some hot glue just so that it can uh, kind of hold it in place while I'm working with the tray and then I'm going to also add some beading up there at the end I just cut down the skewer to size and then just glue it in place and then once everything is dry here you see the finished project. I just took off all of the labels from those different recycled bottles, placed them on my tray, added a couple of the Dollar Tree votives in between, and then these are just some fresh clippings from my yard. And here you have a beautiful centerpiece. 
Similar store-bought options would include the two vase and tray sets from Amazon there to the left. And then the ones in the middle, I was thinking you could just not put the votive in two or three of those, depending on how you wanted to arrange it and um, just add a bottle there instead and create a similar effect uh, with those center candle pieces, um, just adding vases instead of all of the votives. And then I just thought that Coles one was so pretty up at the right for a great price. And then they also have beautiful floral arrangements on sale at Coles. That one on the bottom corner, Jeep being just $15 and will be a great option, especially for a round or square tabletop. Then, along with a great centerpiece, you can add to that upscale look for just a few dollars more by adding some cloth napkins and napkin rings. To make the ones shown, I took some Dollar Tree twine along with some Dollar Tree shower curtain rings, and then I just took some hot glue and put it there uh, on the little clasp of the shower curtain ring and began winding the twine around the ring. And then I just added some of that multi-purpose glue to the top of the ring and then again continue to wrap the twine and then this just went all the way around the ring until the uh, ring was covered in the twine and then i just finished it off with some more hot glue to hold it in place and next i took some of this wreath garland and i originally purchased this at hobby lobby but i actually saw this recently at the dollar tree and so all I did was a snip a piece of that and wind that around the twine covered shower curtain. And then that's it. Just add a crisp napkin to enhance your tabletop decor, either indoor or out. And now here you can see the tabletop set with those napkins in those new napkin rings and how pretty they look with the new centerpiece uh, made from the paint sticks. Now you can buy those white napkins super cheap at either Walmart or Amazon for basically a dollar each. Walmart has them for two for $1.97 while Amazon's are 12 for 12. And then Amazon has some really cute napkin ring sets. If you're not up for making any napkin rings, these looked really pretty and were at a really great value. Although I love neutral and natural tones in my decor, I do still love to also add a pop of color with some bright summer decor. And so here is a potting table that I actually don't use for potting. I use it more for uh, just entertaining and, you know, putting food out or, um, you know, having a beverage station, something like that. And so here I show it decorated with um, a lemonade pitcher and uh, maybe a three-tiered tray. I also have some wood there at the bottom for the fire pit and a couple of lanterns to use um, around the backyard. But this is where I really wanted to use that pop of color with all of this great bright lemon decor ready to welcome friends and family. To make the lemon slice cake stand, I used this square pan and cup from the Dollar Tree. Then I just took an Expo marker to mark off my cake pan so that uh, on each side I'm measuring at the two mark and the four inch mark and then just swinging it around and doing the same kind of lining up those edges and then going at the two inch mark and then the four inch mark and then again going to all four sides in this fashion because what I'm next going to do is add some of those stickers to the sides of the pan. Now because those stickers are not going to be staying on so well without some better adhesive glue, I'm going to go ahead and just add some E6000 in three dots down the side where I have marked off the pans. And so I'll just apply those stickers all the way around the pan at those marks, three down with the E6000 glue, and then paint everything with white spray paint. Then I'm going to take $12 tree checkers and also paint those with white spray paint. Then I'm going to take this printout of lemon slices, which I will provide a link in the description box, and then I'm going to cut them all out. And then I'll just apply some Mod Podge to the back. And what I'm going to be doing from here is adding those to the spray painted checkers. And so I'll just attach those with the Mod Podge and then make continue to do that for all 12 of the slices. And then once those are dry, I will go back with some of the yellow paint and paint what would be the rind of the lemon. 
and then once the lemon sides are dry i'm going to go back and just accent with some white craft paint the pith part of the lemon as well as in between where the little slices are and you can also do this with a paint marker actually it's better and easier with a paint marker and then once everything is dry i'll just go back and do a top coat of the mod podge to seal everything together then i'm going to take my white cup and just add some e6000 there to the bottom also a little hot glue to make sure it stays in place while the e6000 sets up and attach that to the bottom of my pan Next, I'm gonna go back again with some hot glue and also some E6000 to attach the little lemon slices to the sides of the pan in between the little sticker studs. And then here's what it looks like when it's all finished and it makes a great little stand for either a cake plate or a pitcher. To make the lemonade sign, I'm going to take one of these football games from the Dollar Tree. This is a little wood football game, as well as some of the long barbecue skewers. I'm going to cut the tip off of the skewers because I want to be able to put those and they fit perfectly into the little peg holes of the football game. But I do only want these skewers to be about 18 inches long. I think the uh, skewers themselves are maybe about 24 inches long, so I want to cut those down a little bit. And then I'm going to take some spackle because I don't want all these other holes showing now on my football game. So I took some of my Dollar Tree spackle and I'm going to just fill in all those holes. Now I do want the two end holes to stay open. So a good way to do that is to take those little pegs from the game and keep those in there while you're doing the spackling. And then I just took a little gift card and removed all the excess spackle. Then once the spackle was dry, I went back to the two holes that were um, that are open on the end there and added some E6000. And then I'm going to just reapply my skewers to the bottom. Then once that glue is dry, I'm going to spray everything with this black spray paint, including one of these fairy door art kits from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to paint that black as well. In the meantime, I'm going to take this homemade lemonade printout from my computer. And I again, will provide a link to this in the description box. And then I'm going to apply some Mod Podge to the back of that fairy door sign, a uh, you know, little art kit. Now I have painted black and I'm going to just um, do a nice thin even coat. That is kind of the trick to using Mod Podge. Even let it dry a little, fan it dry a little bit. Uh, and then I'm going to add my sheet right on top of the Mod Podge and just press it down, make sure it's nice and even, no bubbles or any gapping or welting, and um, just put it with my gift card again to make sure it's nice and smooth. And then once that's completely dry, I will go back with a top coat of the Mod Podge all over the front and back to give it a nice protective coating. Then I'm again going to take some E6000 glue as well as some hot glue. I'll put the hot glue to the top and bottom of that E6000 strip I just put on the top of the skewer. And then I'm going to just attach my sign. That hot glue will hold it in place so that it stays uh, nice and secure while the E6000 sets up. And then here is the finished project, a great little summer decor sign to brighten your outdoor spaces. And then for the store-bought items, I found some really great sales. Over at Joann's for $8.99, they have that cute little lemon tree, as well as a beautiful lemon wreath for $11.99. And then uh, over at Kirkland's, they have this great pitcher full of a little lemon tree arrangement and for $14.99, and then also a beautiful centerpiece for $20.99, also with the lemon theme. And then Amazon has these adorable string lights, that light up little lemon slices for $12.99. As in any small space, I love to use pieces that have multiple purposes. In this case, using tables that double as storage or servers. To make this basket storage side table with a removable serving tray lid, I used these products from the Dollar Tree, including this blue bucket and a small storage organization tray and four of the Dollar Tree shovels with the wood handle, and I just removed the handle by unscrewing the small screw there, and I painted them all with some black spray paint. Then I'm gonna take the shovel handles and put them in the corners of the little storage bin, and then I'm going to take some zip ties, and through the second row of holes there, I'm going to place the zip tie through from the inside of the basket, and then bring it around to the other side, and pull it through those holes and then secure the zip tie inside. 
Now I'm going to apply two other zip ties, one in the middle row, doing the same thing in that second hole there, just pulling it through to the middle and securing it in place. And then I'll do the same thing for the last row of holes, again from the inside around the outside corner to the inside where I will fasten it. And then I'm going to repeat that process for all four corners, clipping off those zip tie tails as I go. And then that will form the base of my table. I'm gonna just flip it over, add some E6000 glue to the top and secure the basket on top of that. Now, if I just leave it like that, it makes a great little planner on its own right. It's actually a dupe from an online high-end uh, planter that costs about $79 just for one of those planters there on the right-hand side. And then to complete the piece, I'm gonna just add a wood charger to the top. This I purchased from Target for $12. And then you can see, I can just remove that easily. It stays nicely in place, but I can add all types of items there to the body of the basket and then replace the top to just use it as a table or also as a server, as I mentioned earlier. Now, if you don't wanna spend $12 for the Target option, the Dollar Tree chargers work just as well and they are some great styles as you can see as well if you would like to just use a Dollar Tree pizza pan and paint it the color of your choice. I also want to point out that a viewer mentioned just weaving around some nautical rope would make a great cover. I think that's a great idea, just haven't had the chance to do it yet. And then for the buy options, I did want to just show you that Target tray that I purchased but also these are some great options, especially from Home Depot. They have some really cute little storage tables for the outdoors. And then that one there at the bottom is a little pricey, but it's really neat because what it is, is in addition to being a table, it's also a beverage cooler. But then I found a better priced cooler option over at Lowe's for $37. Problem is it kind of does look like a cooler. Then before moving on to the deck, I just wanted to show you the rest of the patio. And so here is another DIY wreath. I will link that below, but remember the Michaels options. And then I wanted to also show you this sign up here. This has actually been attached with that Gorilla Glue. I did that a couple of months ago and you can see how it's kind of breezy back here. I mean, it gets some good weather back here and that thing has not budged. And then I have a little flower tub, which I will also link below, and then also this plant stand, which I will get into later on in this video. And now I just want to give you a completed overview of the patio area. So this is around dusk, so I have the candlelight going and the little string lights on. So here you can see the serving area with the bright pops of lemon and uh, the candlelight in between that, as well as the centerpiece now being lit up with the candles and all along the back wall. And up there we can see the um, lighted wall hanging, which I forgot to tuck the little controller back underneath. And then here also along the kitchenette with all the little decorations as well as the candlelight. And now moving on, we're gonna continue with the decorating ideas, this time using the deck to illustrate. So as you can see, we did eventually get that deck and pergola built as per my husband's original plans. Um, this is a couple years after construction, so it has gotten a little bit grimy and dirty, so it's gonna need to be cleaned up. And those Ikea furniture pieces have been through the ringer and they're gonna to need to be refinished. You'll see those in a second in a little better detail so you'll see how bad off they really actually are at this stage. And now you can see here how dirty it's gotten over just a couple of years. I can't believe that it gets this dirty. And um, at this stage, I did have my power washer still, so I was able to use that to clean the pergola as well as clean up these uh, tables, these IKEA pieces. You can see they are really not looking so good. Here's some storage pieces as well as the sectional. The cushions as well are a mess. So we had to wash those all up and get everything ready for decorating and for the seizing. Now to clean up the cushions, I actually had to get my son to get them out of the uh, holder because it was really hard to get them out. But we figured out that if you kind of pull them in half or fold them in half, you can then kind of get them out of the uh, casing a little better. Now, we also had to fold it in half to get them back in. 
Uh, but it did work out eventually. It did take a little uh, little strength there, though, to get them out. And uh, then we just threw those covers right into the washer. Now, this is when I still had my power washer. It was still functional. So I couldn't believe it, though, that I went to go wash the Ikea pieces and it literally removed the finish. So I was thinking I was going to have to sand these all down. Oh, no, the power washer, they were in, you know, kind of such despair you know such a, a dilapidated state that the uh, power washer just took the finish right off and so that made it really easy i was able to just go back and sand up the rest of that some benjamin moore stain in dark walnut now this wood was so porous that i did actually have to apply the stain with a brush the cloth wasn't working so well so uh, i did have to do that with a brush and then after we stained all the pieces my son matt and i my daughter nikki and my son mark went back and did the polyurethane coat on top and then here is a shot of the deck and the pergola after it's been power washed so you can see how nice and clean everything came up especially all that dirt and grime on the pergola and it's ready to decorate. And the first thing we wanted to add was a battery operated light fixture because in that pergola, it's there's no electricity running to it. So um, it gets real dark in there. So we wanted to make sure to add something battery operated that we could use to light up that space. So what I did was take four of the Dollar Tree wire basket hangers and two of the Dollar Tree puck lights. And so what I'm going to do is take the puck lights and I'm going to paint the white parts with some black chalk paint. Then I'm going to take two of the wire baskets. I'm going to remove the chains that come with them and I'm going to start zip tying the two together. But as you notice, I kind of made the little spokes scattered so they're, that they're not sitting on top of each other, but they're kind of going in between the other so that I get more spokes coming out of the middle than I would if I just had the one basket. And then I'm going to just tie those with the zip ties in place. I'm going to add about four or five zip ties to make sure it holds nice and tight. And then I kind of keep arranging it because it does shift around when I am doing applying the zip ties to make sure that my spokes are evenly distant. And then after all the zip ties are attached, I just go back with my scissors and remove the little tails. And then I'm going to take my puck light and put some E6000 on the bottom and then place that in the bottom of the basket. And then I'm just going to do the same thing for the other side so that I have two halves exactly the same. Next, I'm going to take one of my chains and I'm going to place it there at the top of one of the sides. And then I'll take the two sides and again, zip tie those together. Now I was going to do this with wire because you do still have to get into the inside of the baskets in order to change the batteries on the lights. But I figured it was just as easy to zip tie and then apply some new zip ties um, than to have to undo the wire. And then you can see you can easily reach in to illuminate the lights. And then here is the finished light fixture hanging from the middle of the pergola and it is really attractive as well as it gives off some fantastic light. Now for the store-bought options, I thought that Walmart hanging lantern up there in the right would have made a perfect substitute had I not um, gone for making this um, lantern myself because we kind of need like a more down light, you know, task lighting that would play games and that type of thing out back. And, and so that's the type of light that would work perfectly. Whereas the other lanterns and the little uh, sparkly lights from Amazon probably wouldn't have been as effective for our purposes. But um, also just want to point out that umbrella light. We used to have that uh, umbrella light with our umbrella outside and it was fantastic. But as I mentioned before, I really like string lights in the outdoor space. It not only serves the purpose of providing light, but also makes for such a great ambiance. And so we decided that on this back wall, we really wanted to add one of those curtain lights. And so we purchased this from Amazon. And again, I will link this in the description box. And um, this is what it looks like when it comes out of the box. And then we just kind of laid it across to space it out, make sure that it was the right length for how we wanted to apply it. And it worked out perfectly. And then we just interweaved it there between the slats on the pergola. 
and then that cord goes down to where the actual switch is or, or the uh, socket is around the side of the house and then we just took it all and unwound it all and there you can see how pretty it looks just hanging down and it just creates a, such a pretty look uh, especially in the evening it's just magical out there and then to add some additional magic my daughter then went and got some christmas lights and weave those in between the slats as well. Now these happen to have a white cord, which was perfect to use against the white panels of the pergola. And then here is a selection of lights. There on the left-hand side is the curtain lights that we purchased from Amazon. There are also some white corded, corded Christmas lights. And then I also really liked these little tiny ball ones on the end. Now that is a big blank wall behind the lights. And I knew that in order to fill that space properly, I really needed to have some big wall decor. And so I got some hula hoops from the Dollar Tree. I got two of the small, one of the medium, as well as some green spray paint that I had on hand and some of this wreath garland that I also got from Hobby Lobby that I also had on hand. And I did notice I mentioned earlier that Dollar Tree has been selling this. So if you can get it at Dollar Tree, that'd be great. And then um, all I did was take the garland and wrapped it around the green painted hula hoop until it came all the way to the other end and I just kind of kept separating it because it kind of bunches up you know just to make sure I had an even coverage of the garland on the hoop and then all I'm going to do is hang that uh, in the largest one in the middle and then the two smaller ones on the sides and I just used some fishing line to hang them so this way it was nice and clear it makes it look like they're kind of floating in space and so I tied one in the middle and then one to either side of that and then just hung them right there from the pergola. And you can see there a little bit um, on the film the uh, fishing line attached to the hoop. And then here are some really nice outdoor decor, large scale items that I found at the stores. So that first one up in the corner, I really like. It's huge, two feet by four feet from Amazon for $37. That Kohl's piece in the middle is stunning. For 34 and then that Amazon tree in the bottom left corner is a great size and a great price however for that price I'd be a little concerned about the quality um, and now conversely on the other side the Kirkland's and the Coles pieces are both uh, marked down and I'm pretty sure that those are a fairly high quality but even with the markdown they're still pretty pricey you might want to wait for those maybe they'll go further down on clearance so in outdoor spaces that are more exposed to the elements, like on my deck, I really don't like to use the typical outdoor material type rugs. And I really found that these plastic polypropylene type rugs really make a great substitute. And so here is one of those polypropylene type rugs that I purchased about eight years ago at Ikea. And you can see that it looks brand new. I really love it, but after eight years, I decided to go with something new. I still wanted to keep it kind of a plastic and not a material type um, fabric. And so I went for this grass-like outdoor indoor rug from Better Homes and Gardens and Walmart. It was just $49 for this six by nine foot rug. And um, there are two different ones. So the other one's kind of coarse and short hair. This one is the longer hair one but these are available in store only and we really like it. It's really nice and comfortable underfoot. It's really soft and shaggy and I love the way it pulls in uh, not only the wall hanging above, but also all of the greenery around the deck, the grass, everything gets pulled in and it makes it really look nice. Now, in addition, you can see how nicely the cushions came up. Um, I did have to use some of that OxyClean uh, gel stick stain remover, but it did the job quite nicely and the cushions came up really nice. Now, in addition to being weather resistant, long lasting and good looking, these polypropylene rugs are also really well priced. So you can see there are some sizable rugs here and they are extremely low priced. So just for the five by six, it's only $10 at Home Depot. They have a six by nine option that also reverses. And you can see the opposite side there for 26. And then Bed Bath & Beyond has a beautiful rug for uh, just a six by nine for $29.99. And then decorating idea number 22 is another double duty solution. This time using large storage boxes to create additional seating. 
So here we can see the storage boxes that I had for my IKEA set. Now when you originally saw them, they were not refinished. So here they are refinished. And then in addition, I added some of the seat cushions from my old dining set on top and then some new pillows that I purchased from Walmart for $12.98. Now, although I love the wood, these really aren't the best solution for storage, but I'm using them because that's what I have. However, I would love one of these. These are actual storage boxes that will keep the contents dry and clean. My wood box is up there on the right and you can see how the open slots leave the contents open to rain and everything else that gets in there. These other options have a solid exterior and a secure lid so they keep things clean and dry. Now, as you can see, these boxes do vary in price, but they also vary in size and you are paying more for the larger box. I just love number 23 and outdoor curtains. I think they just soften a space and make such an elegant statement. However, outdoor curtains, they don't like me so much but I decided to go ahead and give it another try by attaching these PVC pipes to the pergola. And I'm going to do that by measuring and then cutting the PVC pipe to size and then painting them with some of my white spray paint. Then I will drill through the pipe and thread these extra long zip ties through. And then that's how I will attach them to the slats on the pergola. So you can see here, I drilled a hole in the pipe and then I put the zip tie through the hole and then I wrapped the zip tie around the slat and then I fastened it there on the side and cut off the tail. Then I took one of my curtain panels and slid it onto the pole, brought that down to the end there like you see. And now I'm going to go uh, to another section of the pole. Now I would like to have gotten straight in the middle, but I couldn't get that because of the number of uh, slats that come through. So I kind of had to go towards almost the back end for the next zip tie. But again, just did the same thing, drilled a hole through, uh, attached the zip tie to the slat, and then I added that second curtain on the other side. And then to attach the end of the pipe to the pergola, I just did the same thing at the end of the uh, pipe. I just drilled another hole straight through, threaded a zip tie through the hole, and then attached it to that last slat. And as you can see, that PVC pipe is super inexpensive. It's only about $2 for a 10 foot piece. And then I did get the zip ties actually at the Dollar Tree, but you can also get them at Home Depot. They are a little bit more expensive. And then I would highly recommend that drill driver. That is my very most favorite tool. It's one of my very most favorite things in the world, actually. And um, it, I would highly suggest that if you're in the market for one of those. And now you can see on the other side, my luck with curtains. So um, when I first tried to do an outdoor curtain, I used Target's and they were outdoor curtains and within a, about a month, maybe a month and a half, they were completely streaked and faded. Uh, the next attempt was with Overstock and they were supposed to be a cream or neutral shade and they were downright yellow. Now these ones that I'm putting up are actually Ikea curtains, but they are not in outdoor curtains, they are indoor curtains and they don't even make those anymore. I just happened to have them because it was one of the options I was looking for for my bedroom and then I opted to go in a different direction um, and then I never returned them. So I had them hanging around and so I said, I'm just going to use these, I'm not using them for anything else. But if you have had any luck with outdoor curtains, please leave me a comment below and let me know. Even when decorating inside, you sometimes come across weird, awkward spaces and you're not really sure what to do there. But outside, it's always a great opportunity to fill in with some flowers and plants. So as you can see on my deck, there is a spot that is right before where the pergola starts that is just kind of this weird, awkward, dead space. And so I do want to go ahead and fill that with some plants and planters. And since it is a tall space, I thought that I would make one of those ladder planters. Um, to fill up the space height wise. And so I got two of these two by six foot pieces of lumber from Lowe's, as well as two packs of the large painter sticks, five of the oblong planters from the Dollar Tree, and then also five packs of their S hook. And then I'm going to just use some of my leftover stain to stain the wood. Now before I do that, I want to just cut the tops of the painter sticks off. I want them to just be, you know, squared across. So I'm just going to take that little 
handle part and cut it right there kind of at the nape of the neck. I'm going to just line that up with my miter box and then just saw that right off. Then once that's done, I'll go back and stain the wood. And this time, because the wood is nice and smooth, I'm able to just go in with my cloth and rub the stain right into the wood. And then once all the sticks have been stained, I'm going to go back with my ruler. I did it on the centimeter side. It was just easier for what I wanted to uh, measure. I'm going to take us uh, two centimeters in from each side, and I'm going to just make a little dot there in the center. And that's where I'm going to drill my holes. And then I'm going to drill the hole straight through the slat um, right to the other side. I'm going to do that on both sides for each of the five paint sticks. Then I'm just going to change out my drill bit and then go ahead and add some holes to the side of my Dollar Tree oblong planters. And I'm kind of just going to do make that hole to the back uh, of that crease on the side. So on both sides, it'll be on the back side of that crease. And because it does leave a jagged edge, I do want to go back with some little squares of duct tape and tape over the hole. But then I need to go back and drill through the tape now so that I have a hole to put the S hook through so I can hang my planter. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my S hook and put one end through each side of the oblong planter. And then that's how I will hang it onto the ladder. Now, if you're good with the print that's already on the bucket, then you're good to go. I'm going to go ahead. I wanted to add a little personalization of one of my favorite sayings. And I wanted to, to the planters to say bloom where you are planted. Now I could have done it just by painting over the top. I don't think that looked too bad, but I had this balsam wood on hand and I thought I'll just go ahead and make little plaque coverings. And so I just cut the balsam wood down to size. And now I'm going to just paint that and then write my wording right on the little balsam wood plaques. First, I'm going to make this little edging with my paint marker. I'm just going to go around the whole perimeter of the sign with a paint marker, making a little dash mark with the marker. And then once that's dry, I'll go back with my ruler and I'm going to just mark off um, spacing so that I know where to write my letters within. And so for this word that I'm writing now, I'll be doing the word where. So I have five inches of space to write um, the word where. So I'm going to make those letters be within one inch since it's a five letter word. And so I'm going to just make sure that every time I do a letter that I'm writing within that one inch space. And so I want to make these those tall, skinny letters. And so I'm going to just go top to bottom with the um, vertical lines and then keep my horizontal lines within that one inch space. Since my next word, R, is just a three letter word, I'm going to leave both the first and the last space blank and then do the same process of writing one inch wide tall letters in between the spaces on the ruler. Now, since my last word, plant it, is seven letters, I'm going to have to reduce my space. And so this time I'm going to go ahead and go back to the centimeter side and I'm going to make these letters two centimeters wide and then keep them nice and tall as well. And then I'm going to attach my little plaques with some of my tight bond glue. Uh, this will be on the pine board. And then once I get to that measurement, I'm going to draw a line across at that spot. And then I want to take one of my paint sticks. Now I want to take the machine cut edge. And by machine cut, I mean the cut that was on this paint stick, not the cut that I handmade. And I'm going to align that up with the edge of the board as well as that white line. And then I'm going to take a number six screw that's about one inch long. It is not about, it is a one inch long number six screw. And then I'm going to just drill that right through the hole that I made and into the wood below. Now, before I continue, I just want to stop for a quick editing note. Now, if you notice here, I am applying, this is actually the back of the ladder and I am applying the paint sticks to the ladder with the good side up. That is incorrect. 
it should be on the other side where the paint stick numbers are. The numbers should be facing you at this stage. I didn't realize that till the end. I was like, oh, I did it backwards. I had to go back and flip everything. So uh, at this point, everything else will be fine. It's just at this point, you should have those numbers up. Okay, back to ladder construction. To attach my next cross piece, I'm going to place my ruler on the ladder and then I'm going to take another machine cut edge. Now this is important. It always needs to be the machine cut edge on this side because this is how you're going to get everything level and straight. And so I'm going to place the ruler uh, on, the, on the pine board and then place the machine edge cut again, lining it up with the edge. See how it's lined up there with the edge of the pine board. So um, it's one ruler in between and then that machine cut edge goes right up against the edge of the board. Now on the other side, I'm again going to measure down from the top exactly four inches and make my white line there. I am then going to go ahead and attach that first piece right at that white line and again making it flush with the side of the pine board. However, this is the only piece that will come out that way. This is because you are bound to have variations in any hand cut woods. To adjust for these variations, I'm going to scoot down to the bottom of the ladder and apply the last rung next. And so I'm going to line up that ruler at the bottom of my pine board, which I don't have a picture of, I'm sorry. But as long as the edge of your ruler is square with the bottom of the pine board and your rung is square with the top of the ruler, you are good to go. But as you can see, that is going to leave a gap now. Uh, it's not going to be flush. Your rung will not be flush with the edge, but that's fine. It's the, the ruler is machine cut. Remember, your rung is uh, hand cut and the ruler is machine cut. So unfortunately, we got to go with the machines. But you can see there where they are a little off, but it's on the back. So it really doesn't matter. And when you flip it around, it looks just beautiful. You can't see any of that gapping, of course, because now that's on the back side and all the little buckets look so cute. Of course, you don't have any little numbers there uh, if you're doing it correctly. Although it did look cute with the numbers, but I did want to go with, since this was a look for the last dupe video, I did want to keep it original to the inspiration piece. And here you can see it with some pretty flowers. And then here it is styled in the way that the original piece was. So you can see the similarities between the two. Now the uh, other piece had also a different color of stain on the crossbars. I didn't have that color stain. Plus, um, I just kind of like it all dark better anyway. And that too was part of the beauty of DIYing because you can customize things the way you want, the colors you want, as well as, for example, the lettering um, on the front of the basket. The next planter is the small black bucket with legs, and I'm diving into my Dollar Tree stash for this one using these wire brushes that I had on hand. Now, these you can get in the hardware department at Dollar Tree, and I'm going to be removing all of those bristles. Now, be careful. Those bristles are extremely sharp and painful if you touch them or um, even when you're removing them with these pliers, you know, just be very careful. Um, at one point I actually flinged it up and thankfully I had my glasses on, so no issues there, but um, just be, you know, don't be just yanking them out is what I'm trying to say, because I just kind of hold on tight with the pliers and then, um, you know, pull them out. Don't kind of just fling them like I just uh, showed the the pliers there uh, because uh, you don't want those wire bristles to come flying out at you. So then after I have removed all of the bristles from three of the brushes, I'm going to take my little favorite switch driver drill there, and I'm going to drill a hole through the top center. I'm gonna use the top center where the bristle was and use that as my guide and then just continue to drill the hole through all the way to the back side. And I'm gonna do that on all three of the handles. And then I'm going to do the same at the bottom on the bottom row go through the bottom hole in the middle and just do the same thing all the way through to the back and do that for all three of the brush handles. Next, I'm gonna take a regular Dollar Tree black bucket and I'm going to remove that wire handle. Just pull it with my pliers. I do need to use the pliers though because it was kind of hard to pull off with my hands. But just once I got that first side off, the other side just popped right off. Since this planner will be going outside, I do want to paint the handles with some polyurethane before attaching them to the bucket. Once the handles are dry, I'm going to line up my first handle directly opposite of the spout on the bucket. And so I'm going to just hold it in place 
and then take my drill again and just drill a hole now through the spot where it was on the handle and then straight through the bucket. Then I'm going to take some number six machine screws. I only had the one and a quarter inch um, on hand. Probably just a one inch would have done just fine, but we're using what we got. And then I just fastened the screw through the wood handle straight through to the bucket. I did have a little bit of a trouble there, so I just kind of brought it all the way through the handle and then just popped it through the bucket. And then I was able to uh, fasten it with um, the nut and um, you can see here where it is a little bit um, too much excess sticking out but it'll do for our purposes and then I just tightened it with my pliers for my second and third handle I'm going to line them up between where the bucket handle was attached and the spout so right in the middle there in between is where I'm going to apply uh, my second handle on this side and then when I do it on the other side it will also be between those two spots. So the first one was attached right uh, directly opposite the spout, the second one between where the handle was and the spout, and now that third one is going to again go between the handle and the spout. And then here is the finished project filled with a beautiful begonia plant, and here is the original from Kirkland's. The Dollar Tree version costs about $4 to make, and the Kirkland's is around $79 for the small planter. And now you can see how the wood leg planter as well as the ladder planter fill up the space so nicely. That ladder planter comes nice and tall. And then the wood leg planter along with the black kitty litter planter from the front fill out the space so nice. And now here are some store-bought versions. As you can see, the Kirkland's Ladder Planner is on sale for $55.99. It was originally $80. Now, this is not the same one that I made. That one was from Overstock. It's a larger ladder, but um, this is a nice version if you are in the market for a planter, a ladder planter. Now, the Kirkland's wood leg planter is unfortunately not on sale it is still at the original price and they don't even have the small one available anymore the uh, cheapest one they have is the mid-size one at $84.99 but there are some great options there at Home Depot and Target uh, that are similar so you might want to check those out and now decorating idea number 25 is another double duty item this time tables that double as planters seating or ottomans Next we have another Kirkland's dupe and I'm going to be using this Dollar Tree basket. Um, this is one of the kind of that mid-sized one that has the little handle on it. I'm just going to remove the handle with some pliers and then I want to remove the top rim from the basket. So I'm just going to go at the very top of that um, vertical piece and just snip it. You can do this either with wire cutters or with scissors. And um, I just prefer the wire cutters, it just feels like it uh, works a little faster. But um, if you don't have these, scissors will do just fine. So then this is what it looks like once I've removed the rim all the way around. And um, I do make those little vertical pieces standing up, so I'm going to keep those intact. And then I'm going to use a small can that I'm going to E6000 to the bottom of the basket. Now this can is necessary as it will support the weight of the plant stand and the table. Next I'm going to take four of the large paint sticks. These are the five gallon ones. I happen to have these on hand but I originally got these at Lowe's and I think that they cost 98 cents for the three pack. And I'm going to need four of those. Then I'm going to go back to my basket that has a little can attached and I'm going to take one of the paint sticks. I'm going to put the um, you know, flat side down, uh, leave the handle side up, and then I'm going to take some zip ties and I'm going to uh, zip tie those to one of the panels, one of the little sections there. And it doesn't matter which one you start with, but when you do the second one, the second one needs to go directly across from the first one that you attached. So I'm going to go ahead and again attach two of the zip ties. And I'm attaching one at the top and one towards the bottom. And then I'm also making sure that the little nubby part is on the inside of the basket. And then I'll attach a third paint stick to the basket in between the first and the second one. And then the fourth one will go directly across. And then I'm going to take my basket 
a pizza pan from my Dollar Tree stash and also the rim that I had cut off of the basket. And I'm going to take everything out and spray paint it with some ultra matte white spray paint. Before I paint the pizza pan, however, I am going to first wipe it down with some vinegar. And then I'm going to apply a coat of Mod Podge to the surface. This is going to help the paint stick. And since this will be a tabletop, I want to make sure I do that. Now here is the rim and the pizza pan after they've been painted white. And I wanted to take them back in so that I could explain um, the top to you a little bit. So um, definitely the rim part must be E6000 glued to the tops of the painter sticks. Now the pan here has a couple of options. One, you can keep it loose because it does sit in there really nicely. Um, and you don't necessarily need to glue it down if you wanted to use it also as a tray. Um, that is a really nice feature if you wanted to do it that way. Now, if you don't think you're going to be using it as a tray and you just want to make sure that it's nice and secure, just go ahead and E6000 the pizza pan to the, to the rim. So just before I glued the rim onto the top of the paint sticks, I did decide that I wasn't loving those vertical strips sticking up. Um, I thought it would give it a wispy, whimsical look, but it kind of just looks not right. So I did decide to go ahead and cut those down to the first horizontal line. And actually this does go better with the original inspiration piece from Kirkland's. But let me know what you think in the comments, whether you prefer the wispy one or the more streamlined one. And then once the glue was applied, I just added some candles to the tabletop to weight it down as the glue set up. For the planner that's going to go in the bottom of the basket, I'm going to reuse this ready fill container that um, other plants have come in and I'm going to just spray paint that white. And here is the finished project. So on the bottom I put a little plant in the basket and then on the tabletop you have space for another plant or a drink or maybe some other summer essentials. And then here is the Kirkland's inspiration piece. Now of course the Dollar Tree version costs about $4 and the Kirkland's version comes in at around $69. And now here you can see it in action on the deck. It makes a great little end table as well as a wonderful planter on the bottom. And then here you can see one of the refinished tables from the set. And here's the other one acting as an ottoman. I can just put a cushion on top or I could put the two together for a longer table. I could also pull them back apart again, put cushions on them and use them for seating um, in a party or get together. So it has lots of variations, lots of options. And then there are some great buying options. That Kirkland's Inspiration piece is still $69. It's still pricey, but if it's something that you're interested in, I just wanted to point that out, that that's still available at Kirkland's. And then you have the Ikea piece, which is still available at Ikea for $55. It is still a good value as well because of all the versatility. But look below that. There is these stools that they have for $5.99. Now these can be used as seating, tables, plant stands. They come in a variety of colors, black and white included. And then also in black and white are these wonderful Home Depot tables that have a removable tray on top plus space below for one large planter or several smaller planters around the bottom. Also making an encore appearance is the small deck storage box from before, which also can be used as an ottoman and a table. Number 26 is another double duty option, this time for decor items. So since I like to have lights and candles, why not use pretty ones that can double as decor? Also other items like watering cans that are also needed. There are such beautiful ones out there. You can also use those as decor. First up is a candle in a cement holder from Hearth and Home by Magnolia sold at Target. I just love these candles when I saw them, but I wasn't in love with that $12.99 price tag. So I thought, let me see how I can recreate this finish and do a DIY version at home. First, I thought to use the jar from an old jar candle that I had. And this way I could just finish the glass uh, once, use votives inside, and then have the holder ongoing. But then I remembered I had this candle from Aldi, which I had picked up, I think for like $3.99. And um, this was very similar to the shape of the Magnolia candle. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna just uh, give this one a try as well. And then I also had this um, candle, jar candle that I had from a previous project that was in my craft closet. And I thought I'd give that a shot as well. To make the cement finish, I found a wonderful recipe online and I will link that below. But basically you use three quarters parts of spackle, 
to one quarter part of paint. Now in the recipe they did use tinted primer instead of the chalk paint, but I figured the chalk paint would be a good substitute and it actually was. Since I had a spot in the finish from where the label was, I thought to add some Mod Podge to the section and then I figured I would just paint the entire surface with some Mod Podge to create a nice even surface as well as a good base coat. Since the jar candle from the previous project had already a coat of paint on it, I just proceeded to paint directly on that one, but that ended up being my guinea pig. So for the rest of this DIY, I'll just be using the Aldi candle. And so you can see how nice this paint is. I was really impressed with it. Look how nice and smooth it comes on. It has great texture and great workability. It's nice and um, fluid. It doesn't, it's not like chalky or too thick or anything. So it really is wonderful. And then to get nice even strokes from top to bottom, I put the candle on top of the spackle container and this way it elevated it off the work surface and I was able to get those strokes straight from the bottom to the top. After letting the first coat dry completely, I did go back to apply a second coat. Now I did make an error here in that I should have used a fresh batch of the spackle paint. Um, you can see here where it is a little dry, a little thick, it is clumping up a little bit. I mean, it was still workable and I was able to use it, but I would definitely suggest using a fresh batch of paint for the second coat. And I also added some of the paint to the top of the candle and just made sure that I didn't have any getting into the candle itself. Next, I took some of the original mineral colored chalk paint, as well as some of this steel colored chalk paint, and put them both together along with some water to create a little glaze uh, in order to create those color variations that you naturally get in cement. Now, since this is lighter and also diluted with the water, it will just create a spotty effect that we're looking for. And so I'm gonna add some of the diluted paint around the edges of the candle, as well as in various spots all through the body of the candle. And again, when this dries, when you see it here, it does look like it's blotchy, but uh, when it dries, it will give that muted kind of just um, color variation effect. Once the glaze was dry, I wanted to do the lettering. So I took some painter's tape and I just placed two pieces with a little space in between. Now the name of this candle is Mint Basil. And so I want to put that on the front and I'm gonna use this Play School marker. The Sharpie didn't actually work. I had to use this Play School marker. Uh, on this surface it didn't work. And um, so what I did was I just started with that second word, basil, and I'm just using the pieces of tape as a guide so that the top of my letter and the bottom of my letter uh, um, hit each one of those spots. And so I am having some difficulty doing this um, at this angle, so uh, I just went ahead and finished off the rest of the letters and you can just see there where that tape method just works out perfectly. You're able to keep everything in line. And then here we have the finished project and here you can see those little color variations I was referring to. And then here's the original. And um, this one, because of the Aldi candle, it was $4.50. But if I use the recycled one, it would have only been about 50 cents in materials. And again, the Hearth and Hand by Magnolia one is $12.99. The next project is a fun little Dollar Tree DIY using a child's watering can and then just spray painting it with some copper spray paint. Now, of course, you first need to get this sticker off. And let me tell you, it was a bugger. As you can see here, I mean, it wouldn't give for anything. So I did have to soak it and also use some Goo Gone to get rid of the residue. Before painting, I did add some newspaper to the inside of the container because I wanted to make sure that I didn't get any paint on the inside where it is black. Now, this watering can does come in like pinks and yellows and different colors. And I did want to get the back black because I wanted to have that on the inside and not have to spray the inside. So um, if you do get one of the other colors, you will have to spray the inside. It won't look good with the copper. So anyway, this is what it looks like when it is painted. You can see there it has the nice black still on the inside. And then here is the finished project with some flowers and makes such a cute addition to any little patio or porch table. To make the black lantern, I took two of these wall hangings from the Dollar Tree. These are the ones that are about six inches uh, around or six inches square. Then for the risers, I'm going to use four of the Dollar Tree plungers with the plunger bottom removed. And you just do that by unscrewing uh, the plunger head from the pole right like that. Now I just wanted to point out that if you can find the six inch squares with the little uh, 
pieces inside. Those are nicer because you don't have to remove any of the glitter on most of the other ones have that glitter uh, print on it. And also you can use those little inserts for other projects. Also, when you buy the plungers, make sure you buy them all from the same store. I actually bought a couple from one store and a couple from another, and they seem to be two different lots. So even when you're buying them in the same store, uh, make sure that they are all the same size because I did have to saw uh, one of mine off because I had it from a different store. And as you can see, here's how long it was. Uh, it was longer than the other pieces. So I had to uh, cut that piece off. So just make sure you have them all the same size when you purchase them from the store. Okay, so to start, I'm going to just remove the little wall hanging off the back of the plaque. Just use the screwdriver to pop that right off. And then because I am using one with the glitter front, I'm going to need to sand off that glitter before I begin. Now since the second piece is going to be on the bottom, you really don't need to sand that off, but you can if you want to. For the feet of the lantern, I'm going to use these little game dice from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to just put a hot glue four to each corner and I am going to make sure that the dice are in the same direction because you will see the imprint on the outside of uh, the lantern. To attach the poles, I'm going to use E6000 and hot glue. Um, I, for the plunger, I'm going to put the uh, twist top at the top. Uh, because um, it does cover get covered by the lid um, and also I just want to have a nice solid base or nice solid surface for my glue to attach with so I'm going to just add some E6000 to the bottom and then also the bottom side there as shown and then I'm going to also take some hot glue and put a strip of hot glue above the strip of E6000 on the side of the pole and then I'm going to just place it into the corner of uh, the of the wall hanging and uh, just hold it there until the the hot glue is set and then I'm going to just um, place it down so that it, it can stay in frame because it is kind of tall and um, you can see how the a lid just pops right on the poles there at the top and I'm going to not glue this down so that I can remove it in order to make different flower arrangements or different candles and there you can see the feet and um, then I'm going to just take the whole thing and give it a coat of black paint. To make the topper for this lantern I'm going to take the lid and then one of the plunger heads and also one of these Dollar Tree shower curtain hooks. I'm just going to remove that inner piece there with uh, wire cutters. And then the curtain ring will be attached to the neck of the plunger there as shown. And then I'm just going to hot glue and E6000 everything in place. And here you can see the finished lantern after everything has been painted black. I've also added a Dollar Tree vase and a battery operated candle. There is also a smaller version which is made simply by using some wood dowels from Walmart. These come three to a pack so you will need two packs but you just change the risers out to these wood dowels instead of the plunger poles and then everything else is the same. And now here are our double duty decor items. First we have the cement finished candle as well as the copper finished watering can here filled with a cute little flower display and then also the black lantern this is the smaller one filled with a nice little plant if you like the height and presence of potted trees in your outdoor space but aren't loving that price tag a good option is to make some stands and just place cheaper plants on top of the stands to make my first stand, I'm going to use the same method I used to create the small lantern in the previous DIY, except this time with a larger shadow box. And so I'm going to need two of those. And then I will also need risers. And in this case, I'm going to be using the handles of this stand-up dustpan. And then you just come off by unscrewing them from the base. 
Now I'm going to remove the screw part because that piece will pop out easily with some pliers. You just kind of have to wiggle it back and forth. And then that does eventually just pop right out. On the other end, it has the handle. That end is not so easy to take off. So I'm going to just leave that side intact and um, go ahead and paint my shadow boxes now with some black paint. I'm also going to take four of these dessert cups from the Dollar Tree and also paint those black. So now once everything has been uh, painted with the black paint, I'm going to attach my dessert cups to the base of the one shadow box with some E6000 glue. And then I'm again going to take some E6000 glue to attach the poles to the inside of the base. And so I'll start with some E6000 at the bottom layer, and then I'm going to add some hot glue on top of that, just a strip. This is just to hold it in place while the E6000 sets up. And then I'm going to repeat the process for all four sides. And then I just topped it off with the other shadow box and I have a great little plant stand. Now keep in mind that I will be using this only on my covered porch. I would not put this out by the deck at all. It's just not made of materials that would withstand rain and uh, other elements. So definitely for a covered space but it does look great with a nice potted plant on top, like this beautiful fern. And like I said, um, it just, you can take a plant like that fern, which was about $12 and give it height and presence with the stand. Now, in order to counterbalance the weight, you can also put a smaller plant on the bottom shelf. Next, I'm going to make another plant stand from these two end tables, which as you can see, have seen better days. Now you may see things like this either at yard sales or in um, thrift stores. And I just wanted to show you different things you could do with them, something like this, and create a really nice, beautiful plant stand. And then I'm also gonna be using this Dollar Tree black bucket and some black spray paint to fix them up. And so first I'll just remove the tops of the tables, just unscrew them there on the bottom, and then I'm going to spray paint the bases with the black spray paint and clean up the tops a little and give them a nice coat of polyurethane. And then here you can see that the, the bases have been painted. The uh, tops have been cleaned up a little bit, not too much because I'm going to glue them two together. So I didn't have to do too much to them. I just wanted to make sure they didn't continue to splinter and wear. And then once the two were glued together and the top was opened like that, I could just put the bucket right in and then I could fill the plant from there. And then here's the finished project, a great plant stand that makes a wonderful display for my fern. However, on the buy side, it was pretty slim pickings, at least for budget-friendly plant stands. Most were $50 and up, and at that point, you might as well buy the tree. Like these two great options from Ikea, both stand almost six feet tall and are normally priced around $49, but the bamboo one is currently on sale for just $34. Now, although they're not too tall, the previously mentioned $5.99 stools from Ikea also make great plant stands, especially if you are looking for something in the mid-size range. Number 28 is such a great item to have in your outdoor space, and that is to add a water feature. And if you were following the original outdoor decor series, you would know that my husband always wanted a koi pond in this area. Unfortunately, since the care of that will be way beyond my capacity, I opted for this adorable koi fish fountain. To get extra height, I place it on top of one of the cement footings left over from the deck construction. These only cost about $6 and can be found at either Home Depot or Lowe's. I've also filled this space with some river rocks from Home Depot, which cost just $10 for a 40 pound bag, and then added some Dollar Tree solar lights. And then for the buying options, you can see the koi fish fountain that I purchased at, at home uh, for $67. They have some great uh, fountains there. And the one below is also a great buy. That's a nice tall one at 22 inches high, and that was only $63. And then there in the middle, you can see the river rocks and that um, concrete footing I was talking about. Very inexpensive, makes a great stand. At least for this one that I purchased, it made a great stand. And then there are some Amazon options that are well-priced and had some really good reviews. But my favorite has to be this birdbath fountain combo from Target for just $37. Not only is it nice and tall at 35 inches high, but it also had excellent reviews. But best of all, it's solar powered. So there's an additional savings, plus no need to run any cords to any electrical outlets. It runs all by itself. 
Speaking of height, I love to use hanging baskets in my outdoor decor because not only does it draw the eye up, but it also nicely fills the vertical space. Next up are the first of the two hanging planners that we have in this video, and they are going to require three of the Dollar Tree metal hangers. I'm going to take off all of the chains, so all three of the hangers will have the chains removed. And then to give the planner a little bit more weight and substance, I'm going to put two of the planners together on the bottom. And I'm going to just kind of stagger where the sections go so that it makes a nice even um, distribution of all those kind of cross lines. And then I'm going to zip tie those again. This is a lot of zip ties in this video, but I'm going to zip tie the two together so that they create one unit for the base. And I'll be attaching a zip tie at every other one of the little kind of nubby things sticking up from where the uh, hooks attached on the hanger. So I'm just kind of scattering those zip ties around and then I'm going to go back with my wire cutters and just clip off those tails. I'll be using the third hanging basket as a topper, but I'm going to leave that off at this time. Uh, one, because I have to paint them, and also because I need to fill it with the plant before attaching the top with some wire. I will also be using this Tupperware bowl that I also got from the Dollar Tree. This is that Betty Crocker one. This is the larger sized bowl and I'm going to spray everything with some aged copper spray paint, including one of the chains. And here is everything once it's been painted. I have the base and the top, and then here is the bowl. And I'll just put that bowl right in top inside the base, and you'll see here where I will attach that eventually. But again, first I need to fill the planter with the plant. Before I do that, I'm going to just reattach my chain. Now, instead of applying it to the little hooks at the what was the top, of my hanging basket, I'm now going to be hooking them onto what was previously the bottom right along that center ring. And then here is the finished project with the topper attached. Now this project is actually a dupe that was inspired by multiple other retailers including Magnolia and Wayfair. Because of the copper color, this DIY most closely resembles this product from a company called Terrain. But of course, the Dollar Tree version costs about $6 to make, while the Terrain version retails at about $58. Lastly, I have another hanging planter, this time using a Dollar Tree basket and a Dollar Tree mop head. So for this one, I'm going to be creating a version of macrame. We'll call it a version of macrame. And I'm going to start out by just removing some sections of the wire basket. This is where I just want to kind of leave uh, some open space so that I can get more of uh, a macrame look and that it's not just following the grid of the wire basket. I'm going to take two sections of the mop head. I'm going to crisscross them and then I'm going to tie a knot. And that's about it. That's the extent of my macrame skills. Uh, from there, I'm going to just take that crisscross uh, piece of the mop head and attach the one end to that open section that I just created by cutting out a piece of the wire basket, securing it down with some hot glue. Then I'm going to take the other end of my little cross knot and do the same thing. Add a little hot glue and then wrap it around the rim of the basket. Then I'll take the other two ends at the bottom and um, go to the one corner of the basket where I again will apply some hot glue and then wrap the end. And then again to the other side, just applying some hot glue to that corner and then wrapping the string of the mop head. And there you pretty much have basically the only decorative element that I'm going to do here. Uh, pretty much the rest of this, I will do that, repeat that in other sections of the basket. But for the most part, I'll just be wrapping the wire of the basket with the mop head strings. And here you can see where I've done a good portion of the basket, just wrapping that string around. Uh, the wires of the basket and uh, then also adding a few of those X elements as well. And let me show you again both of those since I did run through that pretty quickly. So to wrap the wires of the basket I just attached the mop string with some hot glue to the top and then just simply began wrapping the string around the wire. And then I just kind of go over and under where it meets and continue all the way down to the bottom of the basket going into the bottom uh, sections as well, wrapping around those until I come to a part where it already has some of the mop string and then I just cut it off and glue it to wherever it is that it ends. So here I'm going to take it all the way 
down and down to make a left and then I'm going to make a right and then I'm going to take it down to that portion where it does meet and um, simple as that just add a little hot glue and then secure it with um, you know secure the string with the hot glue and then just snip off that end and then I kind of clean it up as I go along but at the end my daughter did go back and clean off all of the fuzzies and made it nice and pretty looking and then for these cross pieces, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just attaching um, the beginning of the string with a little hot glue, securing it down, and then proceeding to wrap it all the way around and through, and then securing it again with some hot glue once I get to the other end. Now, if you want to see a great tutorial uh, with some real macrame skills, uh, definitely check out Marta's from the Cuban Curls video. Uh, she does a great introductory to macrame tutorial and um, I will definitely link that in the description box below so you can check it out if you want to do the real thing. But back to what I guess you could call a macrame hack planter. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you again how I did that cross because dazzle you again with my macrame skills. So again, just doing the knot there in the bottom. What's nice about this knot, it kind of does move around for you. So um, I'm going to the upper corner of the section that I want to put it in. Now this is a smaller one than I did before. Um, so that's how I kind of did. I did two large ones and then two of these smaller ones on either side. And then what's nice is that knot kind of moves around on the string so you can get it nice and even. And then again, down to the corners, where I'm going to just apply some hot glue and then wrap it um, as well, secure it all the way around, and then just cut off those tails and that'll be my decoration. And then finally I'm going to just wrap a string around the top rim to finish off that portion of the basket. And then once that was complete I went back to create some handles. I just took three of the mop strands and I tied again one of my famous and spectacular knots there to the bottom. And then that creates a cute little kind of pom-pom there at the bottom. And I'm gonna just add some glue there so that it kind of doesn't fray on the ends. And I'll trim that off a little more later on. But um, you know, here wait, I lied. I'm going to dazzle you some more with my incredible skill. So here I'm just doing a basic braid. Um, that's about the extent of what I can do braiding wise. Growing up, everyone was doing the French twists and the fishtails and the cornrows. And yeah, basic braid rosy. That's all you're getting. That's all I got. Then once I made and attached four of the braids all the way around the basket, I added some glue to the tops of the braids. Now, yes, this is a little bit of a hot mess, but it does work. And so um, what I did was I just kind of mashed those all together. And then I took two more strands of my mop head and created a hanging loop with those. And then I took the ends of that loop and just had it, added them to the hot mess. And then I just wanted to make sure that all of my hangers were even and that my basket would hang evenly. And then once I was sure of that, I just continued to work that glue through, binding all the pieces together. And then I took some hot glue and brought, applied that to the end of the uh, hanger area and just began wrapping that now with new and fresh and clean and pretty looking strands of the mop head. So I used two here. Uh, I got you know about three quarters of the way up and then I did need to add a second strand. And so I just secured that first strand and it came back with a second strand. I did cut that off just to make sure that it had a nice clean edge to start with so the you know, transition was as seamless as possible. And um, it's pretty forgiving this stuff, so it, it worked out pretty well. But then my camera cut off, and so this is what the top piece looked like. As a matter of fact, this is what the entire hanger looked like once everything was complete. And there I put in a pretty little plant in the planter. Like I mentioned, my daughter went back and did clean up all the little fuzzies. And here's the finished project. And I don't know, tell me what you think. I don't think it's too bad for someone with absolutely zero macrame skills and at best basic braiding capability and then last but not least is outdoor decorating idea number 30 which is to add some lights to plants and baskets to further illuminate your outdoor space and then here you can see if you look down at the bottom to the little planners that i put around the edging of the deck i did add some dollar tree solar lights to those 
And then as you come back around to the patio area, you can see the little tree there in front of the pillar, as well as the hanging baskets above that all have shimmering outdoor battery operated fairy lights to further illuminate the space as well as give an elegant and relaxing ambiance. And some buying options for the lights would include a one pack of 100 lights. This is a longer strand and Amazon has that for $11.99. And if you need something smaller, they have a two pack of 50 lights each for $10.99 while Home Depot has a 25 light strand for $7.97. And now here is a close-up look of the completed deck. There we see the ladder and the other planters, then the curtains with the hanging hoops and the light curtain behind it. In front of that is the refinished Ikea sofa with some of those great pillows from Walmart. And then some of our double duty tables also serving as planters and ottomans or seating if needed. And of course topped with the lantern, candle and water can decor. Then behind the sofa in the background is the fern standing nice and tall on the repurposed plant stand. Up at the top is the Dollar Tree battery operated light fixture and then down below is the grass shag rug from Walmart. And now panning out you can see the copper hanging baskets as well as the lighted planters below. And then the storage container seating also with some great Walmart pillows. And then there's another look at the now planter and flower filled blank space beside the pergola. And then the seating space again, this time lit up with candle and string lights. And then you can see the adorable little koi fish fountain gurgling away here in the corner. And then here are a few more shots of the space as night continues to fall and the lights really start to shine. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this compilation of 30 outdoor decorating ideas for porch, patio, and deck with both DIY and BUY options. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give a thumbs up and please share with any family and friends you think would also enjoy this video. If you have a favorite or plan on making any of these, please let me know in the comments below. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like what you see, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you join the family. In addition, please let me know what you thought of the buying options of this video and if it's something that you would like to see more of, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time on FabTax, where we're putting the extra and ordinary one DIY at a time.